All right, hey everybody, welcome. Greetings to you all. It's uh, discussing tabletop. It is of course uh, the the twenty fifth of March. I'm like looking at my computer at the dates, and I'm like, can I read these? Does my brain work? Uh, I hope everybody's having a relatively great Saturday. Um, is of course I, Ted Zavrakovin, your Lord and Emperor here, the Over Empire, joined by Momo as we talk about stuff. You know, I have to like keep an eye out because, like in this one, I have to make sure I know which way I'm like putting my hands because mm -hmm. sometimes it's like you know, it, it's I guess it's not mirrored, but I keep thinking it's mirrored. I whatever. Uh, we got a docket today. We got a docket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the docket. Yeah. Let's throw that. In it's there. right there in chat. Yeah, I threw it in the chat. All right. Uh, let's just, let's just get into it. Uh, dun -dun. Well, you know, we got an announcement for a D&D Direct this week for Tuesday. So... I didn't even notice any kind of announcement like that. <laughs> the thing is, it's like, on, um... D, D Beyond, which is the only mm -hmm. place that, like, I guess they did it on their okay, Twitter I, too. I uh, follow them on Twitter. Yourself, yeah, I technically do, but I don't check it very often. I also don't look at Twitter. I uh, have like a I weekly check a couple of people, and then uh, occasionally just like my phone will yell at me, "Hey, this person you followed has sent this message," and I'm like, "Is it someone that I I normally check? No. Is it some? Is it, what kind of message is it? Oh, that looks kind of interesting. I'll check them, and then." check their messages for like the past week you know and sometimes that works and other times i just like a, no i don't care you know sure. but you know occasionally that's a that that's my experience with twitter nowadays is a couple of people i follow and then which i think there's some more on the list that i want to add but i keep not doing it uh, uh whatever anyway but uh so yeah i had heard about this a few days ago uh from uh like a, a uh, some D and D people I follow on YouTube nowadays because mm -hmm. you know everything with the things that happened I started following a couple more people and so like I was like oh hey this is happening and so it, think about this less than a week they announced we're gonna have this big thing that you know everybody wants to check out normally they announce this way in advance for these type of things yep. I feel like it's not gonna have a lot of fanfare. Probably not. I feel like anything they do for at least the next year is not going to have any fans there, too. The one thing that I... I, I didn't go through a lot of it because I just was like... I, I barely cared. Like, I've considered vaguely <laughs> on Tuesday having one of those, like, watch and observe parties for it. And, what you know, time is it supposed to happen at? Noon on Tuesday. Well, I won't be there for that. I could maybe <laughs> well, grab, like, I'll Worm. Yeah. The, the news. They could, I could maybe I grab Worm or a few others to be like, hey, you want to be live, react to the, whatever the hell they're saying? I don't even know how long it's supposed to be. I probably won't be that long. Uh, the one thing that I had heard mentioned was because in this little, like, animated intro they did to it because of course mm. that they they had to spend their budget on an animated yeah, intro this shit uh they did something that was a reference to their movie so movie tie-ins okay fair enough that's a thing that we already know they're doing because i was looking and apparently they have like i guess the character sheets for the people yeah. from the movie already on D, &D beyond which is fair enough they're, they're characters yeah I, I mean that kind of thing i'm like yeah that's fine you know that's it, Will they do, like, a printed adventure version of it? Um, I don't know if they'll do a direct version of it. They might do a prequel adventure. That'd be kind of interesting. Like, a prequel adventure. Um, I can see them doing that. Like, that's another thing that I heard about it. It's sort of like the, the movie is, like, it's taking place, like... It, it doesn't do a lot of establishing stories. It's like, there's, no. like... The, it's group of adventurers. This is, like, adventure three or four, you know? Yeah. Um, fine. Which is fine. It's I, pretty typical, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it, it might. It, it, people say that's why another reason this works better because they're not it, doing it, this stupid yeah, shit. Yeah. It also helps that um, 
the characters have established chemistry off screen. Mm -hmm. So they work better together than like random rag type groups of people that you have to spend establishing time to make them have chemistry. Uh, okay, so it is going to be half an hour. Um, That's not too long. Yeah. Um, they're, and the things that they're, they're, main things that they've said is they're going to be looking at, showing off their, their virtual tabletop. Uh -huh. Which, I gotta admit, their I virtual admit. tabletop has a long way to go for me to be like, I care. Yeah. Zero interest in it. Yeah. Um... They they burned already a lot of the interest I yeah. would have. I, I wouldn't have had a lot of interest because I like I'm fine with roll twenty. You know, a virtual tabletop with bells and whistles is cool. You gotta learn those. You gotta learn those. You know, I'm not against like looking at it and considering it. I gotta maybe use Foundry. Um if the DM wanted to, but Yeah. Just use roll twenty. Roll twenty is the easy one. Um Relatively speaking. Foundry is really cool, but yeah, it has a lot of stuff that you have to learn how to do. So, again, it kind of comes down to... They have a hard sell for me, for sure. Much more than they did. Uh, Tie-ins for the movie. Partnerships is kind of like, I'm like, what does that mean? Toys, I assume. <sighs> That's Product, fine. I mean, I'm like... kind of quiet, apparently. Uh, Who's to me... Alright, I only have to push you in Discord, I guess. Let me do that. I assume since their BTT is going to be d, &D only, it would make sense for them to have it be a multi-system. No. For, in, in my mind, at least. Unless they want to license it out, which, I mean, they might do. But I, I think it's only going to be for d, d I mean, they've got enough of an audience that if they do straight d, &D it should yeah, be still they successful. They can just do 5e and 6e, and then that's, like, the entire audience the tabletop. Yeah. Action right there. Um, I mean, they'll talk about uh, products and tabletop, but yeah, I guess we might see more of, like, actual products of other kinds, which, yeah. I'm like, it's fine. Toys and collectibles are fine. I'm, like, I, I'm just kind of of the opinion of, like, these have a market. I'm not in that market. Here, I'll throw out the uh, link to their announcements for the d, &D Direct, and I, I... I would maybe buy, like, a WizKids collectible, because they're neat, but they're, like, expensive. And here's those uh, character sheets, if anybody's actually interested in those, which... I don't... It might be free, but you might have they're to sign free, it. yeah. You just have to have an account. Yeah, so, I mean, that's fine. I'm gonna look at them. I'm gonna look through it. Okay. Uh, um, I... It does specify that she specifically can turn into an owl there. Cool. Um, which is neat. Otherwise, she's a tiefling druid. Level... What level are you? It's actually hard for me to tell what level... Uh, they're in CR, which is not level. Uh, so, like, these are NPCs you could throw in your game if you want to, I guess. I guess they've established them more as NPCs rather than you'd play them, you know? <clears throat> That's... Fine. It's a CR5 druid, so I assume they're all CR5. Yeah. It's like a lot so, of level 5 characters. Yeah. On a level 5. God, I love and hate the picture of you, Grant, in this. It's just his actual face, like, imposed on a drawing. <laughs> That's what they're all just kind of like. In uh... Hilarious. Well, you know, that's a nightmare for you. Enjoy. <laughs> he is a rogue, as I thought. Neutral evil. Spoilers. <laughs> I guess. Um, he is a rogue. He is standard crossbow rogue, which is mm. an interesting choice, because crossbows are worse than longbows. Also, heavy crossbow, which a rogue can't normally use. That's mm. neat. It's got special proficiencies. Ooh. Yeah. Is it he uh, fancy? Michelle Rodriguez's character is a barbarian. Simple enough. Yeah, he's just like... Here is basic character. Holy shit, they've got a red wizard in 5e now. That's actually kind of cool. Because mm. red wizards didn't have stats in 5e. Yeah, I thought red wizards were just wizards. Red, they, <laughs> like, they're just generic necromancer is what you're supposed to use, but they're the red wizards of Bay which are a specific <sighs> type of people. But the problem with the red wizards is they're a lot more complex than that, but freaking D&D yeah. forget that because... They 
they pull a uh, what I what I like to say nowadays is a Thassalonian uh, thing, which if you don't know, Thassalon, the ancient magical empire, had basically a leader for each uh, school of magic. Guess what the Red Wizards are supposed to have? A leader for each school of magic. They're all evil wizards, but you have your evil conjurer, your evil necromancer, your evil invoker, your evil enchanter, your evil illusionist. Hell, that's what the Red Wizards are supposed to be. There's what, like, the super lich who's like a level 20, like, necromancer. What, I can't remember his name. Um, that's one of the leaders there that's like, a everybody kind of hates, but he, anyone gets rid of him because he's like, he's like the main undead in the entire place, but he's like, mm -hmm. he's also like, ha ha! I'm just a lich and also powerful, so you can't get rid of me. And also probably level 20. Fuck you, bitches. I like being here because I can abuse this place. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's uh, that's Red I mean, Wizards for you. <clears throat> I and, assume... Because the Red Wizards are like... Oh, I assume there's going to be a thing now. Because they're... They've got five E stats now. So, you know, that's... I mean, interesting that they... You know... They weren't, they're not really a thing in the time of 5th edition. I mean, the timeline of Forgotten Realms. They kind of already got their ass kicked by some adventurers. Ah, Zaztown. I looked up his name. Hmm, yeah. Mm. They, they don't have anything in 5th edition. Last time they mentioned him was 4th edition, apparently. Uh... And the Zulakers of Thay. That's what it is. The word. Anyway, uh, so, um, let's talk about some other stuff, though. Because you know what? There's plenty of other things to talk about. And in no particular order, I'm just going to throw these out here, because I could have arranged these. I chose not to. Uh, Unmatched Adventures, Tales to a Maze. This looked neat. It's basically a pulp uh, cooperative uh, little game uh, that you can have here. Very funded, uh, 16 days to go. It's for one to four people that, you know, uh, a little board game. Um, and it's very uh, pulp adventure -y kind of, uh, you know. Uh, they've got a Mars Invaders and Mothman that they're showing off as Hell villains. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, you've got Mothman, great build, and you got Mars Attacks, great movie. Yeah. Uh, like the other ones, they got like Blob, the Jersey Devil, Skunk Ape, the Ant Queen, the Tarantula. Uh, it looks like Loveland, uh, something rather maybe. Uh, and they got some characters that have ability. One of them's Nikola Tesla, apparently. One of the heroes. Nice. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna look up if these are real people. Uh, Gold Bat is a versatile superhero. It's basically a man with a skull for a head. Is that like supposed to be like the Phantom? <laughs> They're only version uh... of that. These are pulp characters, yes. Okay, so there's, they're actually like pulp characters from probably yep. pulp fiction. Pro Gold Bat pulp. is a Japanese superhero, and Christmas is a pulp lore character from Louisiana. Oh, that's kind of cool. Nikola Tesla is his, like, pulpy memes version. It's <laughs> yeah. not the real man he was in real life. Yes. It's the pulp meme version. He was a real dude. He was not god of electricity. <laughs> and Dr. Jill Trent, science sleuth. <laughs> I just like Michael that. Tesla was, was just a crazy dude. <laughs> he he was... made a big coil. He was a very crazy dude who made a big coil. And technically did a lot of electrical research that, uh, he... what's his face, Ed stole. Edison stole. Yeah. Was, you know, Tesla, great, great inventor. He was a little bit crazy. Yeah, it, it, it helped. Crazy helped, uh, you know, Edison well, steal it. Well, you know, Edison was a great businessman. It's, uh, uh, probably a probably a, a passable inventor, a great businessman. All of these are public domain superheroes, as a note. Well, that's actually kind of cool that they're taking, like, actual uh, things from, like, pulp fiction from back in, like, you know, the earlier days and, like, putting them together. This That's, that's actually kind of neat. I like that. Yeah. Um, and, and they are doing, like, a variety of things from around it. So it, it looks really cool. Um, it has a very interesting art style, and, uh, honestly, little cooperative board games like this are really yeah, neat. Yeah, that's definitely very neat. Yeah. So, let's see here. I just see the basic amount here. It is... 
Uh, $60 will get you the game, some promos, and access to the pledge manager. There you go. I, oh, they only have the two levels of it. So they're just like, hey, uh, join us. Or, you know, access to the pledge manager for five bucks. Cool. Pay more if you want. Kept it simple, which is honestly not bad sometimes. Yeah. Um, so let's talk. I, I, I've, I've mentioned uh, kind of like old school RPG type things, but this is an interesting one because... This one here has passed a million dollars. Have we yeah. talked about this before, Shadow Dark? I think we did talk about this specifically, yes. Yeah, okay, we did. It was two weeks ago. Yes. Uh, it was on the 4th. So, I wanted to bring it up again, uh, honestly, because I noticed this nice number of a million dollars. I mean, I'm not surprised there's a market for this. I just know I'm certainly not in this market group. Yeah, because it's... I'm... Well, well, my first game was Cyberpunk, which is an old school RPG. I don't like old school RPGs that much anymore because they're old. They work and, sometimes, and thus mechanically are not up to modern standards. Yeah, um, and just they're very much the like. Here you will make a character, uh, make like three backups because this first one is absolutely going to die. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't like that kind of gameplay anymore. You know. It yeah. Was fine back in the day, but the, the, the definition of an art, a tabletop RPG has certainly evolved. I, I definitely will agree with that with that. And and you know, as much as like I I do like to rag on something like A D and D, which is a pretty Deadly oh, system. A D and D is like one of the fucking deadliest things, but it's it's one of the most important. It, again, it also is sort of like I'll say like it also depends on how the person you're playing against is. Like if they're if they're sending a reasonable battles against you, death is there, but it's probably not a huge thing. Unlike oh hey, oops, all saves or die. You know. Uh, the, the, same with Pathfinder. There's plenty of save or die stuff at a certain point in time. Y you don't have to use that. But, uh, again, I, I, it reached a million dollars. It's kind of like, I don't know what these poor people are going to be doing for planning this one. Oh, they're like, like they're, 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 for the physical books, they're going to have a rough time. Yeah. It's, this level of success is technically a problem for people on Kickstarter. This was a big issue for the um, last Airbender RPG. Yeah. They're, 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 the physical releases were delayed for so long because of the backlog. Yeah, because it's just so much. And you have to figure out like stuff with your budget and stuff. And it's, it's, it's more money than you're expecting. And certainly, yeah... The majority of that money is going out to all the various things. But the thing about a Kickstarter is, not only is it funding it, there is money going to some of those people. Like, there's a percentage money going to the people. Yeah. This is probably more successful than any of them were planning, honestly. Absolutely. Like, their goal is very modest. Yeah, 10,000. And now it's a, a million. Yeah, so they've reached, uh, 10, th it, it'll be 10,000 percent? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so, uh, anyway, hey, that's a little update on that one. Um, on another note is something that's coming from uh, a combination of, uh, let's see the companies here, uh, Dice Tales and Modifius Entertainment. And right now, it only has a launch page, so I'll share the launch page with you. I think I have a couple more, um... Uh, links that I can find here for it. Um, they're bringing Blood and Doom, uh, which is a... I, I don't know if this is a, a, a thing that's been in existence, or is this something new, but they say it's like a fantasy world of Aether. Uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be a dark, gritty, immersive experience, where there's like a cult that worships extra-dimensional entities, notes of Heralds of Doom... And you have to kind of fight against them, learn the secret past of your land, etc., etc. It's got a core book primer, art eight archetypes. What's that website, I believe? Um, um, there is a primer that exists too. Uh, it's Dice Tales who's doing it, right? Yeah. Here, this gives a. Oh, 
No, I, I put the wrong thing. Yeah, this is their blurb of text for their website on it. Okay. Which gives a lot more information. And here on Drive Through RPGs, I, uh, a 500 page free primer on all the stuff they're doing. Really? I, 500 pages. That's not a, that's not a primer. <laughs> That's a poor rule book. <laughs> it's apparently it's five hundred pages they're offering for free. Whole ass book. I know. I I just saw this and I'm like, what? Okay, so it's the uh, core rulebook primer, both Doom's uh, Slayer Codex primers, a Blood and Doom soundtrack sampler, and a high detailed map of Aether. Is what's all looked at this. So. It is basically like a, I guess, starter of the core rule book, two other books, and then some other stuff. So it is, it's actually like three books plus a few extras. So that, that explains why it's 500 pages. Uh, okay. But also, it's still 500 pages. Um, yeah. I mean, it looks pretty standard fantasy. It's got, you know, you got your barbarian, you got your fighter dude. Yeah. Ranger archetype, Yili boy, rogue, bard. Oh, you could have a bard. I'm curious what if it's going to be its own system, or is it its own system, or is it like using because it's working with Modifius, Modifius system? I'm just trying to. It doesn't say what kind of system it uses. It does say unique dice system. Okay. So they have their own dice system. Okay. Cool. Um, so I'm, it, it, this does, again, look like, it looks like a little bit more than just a publishing partnership with Modifius, but it does look like it's like, it doesn't look like it's as full a, yeah. uh, that's that weird thing, like, you know, it's not publishing, it's not a full Modifius, it's like, together with them, but it's like, I feel like it's more the dice table games but maybe they only have so many resources so they're like we'll yeah. partner with you for bonus resources i don't know it's kind of weird but it dutch from the netherlands yeah uh on the 4th of april you'll be able to you know uh, uh check out the kickstarter <sighs> might, might at least say something about that when it comes when yeah. the kickstarter goes live we'll um, probably have more detail on how it's played yeah, so I uh, think we keep an eye out for now. Um, so because of uh, everything that's going on with like the Orc, the Open uh, Creative License, um, uh, Chaosum is putting out a new version, a new edition of uh, the basic role-playing system that, the, that they have. Um, using the Open RPG Creative License. So, this is interesting. Uh, this is like the first thing that we've seen that's a pretty big thing that's going under this Open Creative License, that they're putting something probably to a degree under it already. Um, mm -hmm. I've, n I've known the basic role-playing, uh, blah, blah, whatever they call it, system. I've heard of it before. I know, I think it's, um... The, it's the system that Chaosum uses for a bunch of their stuff, which is mm -hmm. Call of Cthulhu and a yeah. few others. Um, I don't... I, yeah. Call of is a big one. Yeah, that they use this for. Um, I, I, it, it's one of those ones I've, I know we, I've, I've talked about on this show before that they've used it for something else. Um, Rune Quest, Pendragon, 7C. Yeah, there we go. Um... So the entire thing, uh, the new updates released in April on PDF uh, or directly from Chaos of Mineral Quarter Grace, Drive Through RPG. They'll have a hardcover release of it. Um, so it's the idea that I guess it's falling under that Orc creative license, which I, I don't know enough about how the Orc is actually stated at this point in time. Mm -hmm. that putting it on under it is like, well, what does that even mean for basic or anything under it? Yeah. I, there's a lot of questions I have. I it's. know if there's a readable version of what the orc is yet. 
Do you know who they'll know? Um, um, let me click on the link here that Chaos Sun provided when they're talking about it and see. No, this is just the announcement. Yeah, I don't know if we've seen what the actual license is. Right? Yeah. Cause I don't think anything is really on it aside from Pathfinder stuff currently. Yeah. It, it might say something in one of these books that has it yeah, in it. Like, I, I, I just haven't seen anything that that reads it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just an unfortunate thing. I have not seen any books or materials that have been published under it to check the. It's it, 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 still very new. Yeah. But again, like a, a new uh, like version slash printing of this is fine. You know, um, uh, getting a little bit of update to everything, um, always good. Um, and putting it under the open game license. It, it, I don't know how much of an update to their rules this is, or if this is just like a yeah. new version of a print with it. They don't really. It might just be a new say. printing under it. Yeah. Um. They don't really say either way. Their announcement's just so like it, it's interesting, but it's also just like it, just let us know more stuff. The announcement of hey, we're doing this thing. Kind of what it is. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. It does the job of an announcement, but you know, it doesn't give a lot of information. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, hey, uh, something that was originally in the Klingon Game Master's Toolkit is now being published separately. So if you do not want that product from Modifius, uh, you can spend four pounds and just get the mission that was a Klingon-only mission. Um, so, like, we've talked about how it was really cool to introduce the uh, idea of, like, having something like the Klingons as a specific, like, you can just play Klingon adventures... Uh, that was really cool. Uh, hey, missions for that and stuff like this of, like, here's something that a crew of Klingons would go off and do that sounds, you know, Klingon-y. Uh, what is this one? Uh, a rogue asteroid's a collision cult with an agricultural planet in the Klingon Empire. Uh, it's threatening your food supplies! Ugh! Uh, yeah. Uh... There's more stuff going on or something. I don't know. Anyway, in, in an adventure where you're punching an asteroid and preventing it from falling or something. Like, just like Chris Redfield. <laughs> it, it, it just reminds me of, like... I, I, I honestly don't know... It, it, side tangent here. Very mm -hmm. side tangent. Stellaris. When you've got, like, a star base that watches, yeah. like... One of the primitive planets that you have, like, in your sick type, like, you know, like, oh, it's like, you know, there are Stone Age people on this planet, and then all of a sudden they're like, an asteroid's heading for them, and I'm like, my, um, star base that's in there is just shooting that until it's yeah, dead. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> do I actually are, have to do something? Karen Stellaris, and this is Mega Titan, is up until, like, two days ago, um, if you weren't watching a primitive and they hit the atomic age, they would just nuke themselves. I didn't, I didn't even know that. So, basically what happens, a patch went out like two days ago, and one of the patches was basically like, um, all atomic era primitive worlds stop nuking themselves at once when unobserved. <laughs> so you couldn't use the new DLC because of that bug, which is another side thing. It happened in CK2 when they released India. India would just explode into constant peasant revolts because of a misplaced comma in the coding. So I'm assuming that's what happened here. <laughs> They're just like, well, we've got atomic age. The chance Nukes went off. from like this like ten percent or whatever probably to like a hundred percent. As soon as they hit it, they just nuke themselves. <sighs> yeah, game development's hard. <sighs> you know, coding is difficult. Do I do I even want to? USAopoly, why have you done well, this? What, what did they do? Well, the first one was like uh, why did they do this and why did they do it now? Um, they're doing something with Steve Jackson Games. They're doing a Munchkin with Steve Jackson Games. Can you right. guess what the Munchkin that they're doing with Steve Jackson David Games is? David Bowie Munchkin. Nope. Okay. At least they're not being You will not be able to guess this, I don't think, because um, it's something that friend. I'm like... Friends Munchkin. No. Uh, yeah. I will tell you. South Park. I mean, South Park's still popular. Uh, okay, I can see it still being popular, but it's sort of like one of those things that I'm like... Does that make a good munchkin? Hey, you know, Frasier is a great show, but I don't think anyone has watched it in about ten years. But it's my entire thing is, like, there are plenty of 
weird IPs that like they could have chosen that I feel like would have made an actual decent lunch kit. I mean, unless uh, they, I, I did think of something. Mm -hmm. Stick of Truth wasn't that supposed to be pretty good? That was like, a RB? game, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was a game. I don't know if it was good or not because I don't like stuff. I'm not the best I... judge of South Park products because I don't like South Park. I uh, watched a bunch of it in the early days. I stopped watching it because it was like it, it, you know, it's but the it's same. Not thing. my, not my brand of comedy. I can understand that. There was plenty of comedy that wasn't really my brand. There was a, there was enough stuff to keep me there because it was like mm. that mixture of like sixty six percent I was okay with, and the other was like eh, whatever. I can live it's like with that it. mixture of it's a bit cringe comedy, and then yeah. it's that like offensive to kind of be offensive, but parodying stuff. And I'm just like I don't know. It's not really my thing. I just find a lot of it that funny. Um, but yes, the the stick of truth uh, from a, I I knew a friend that played it and said it was pretty damn good. Yeah, I you heard know, it's a good RPG. But so I mean, it's, maybe I if they know. based it around that, but they don't maybe. say they're doing that. I assume it's generic South Park. Look, uh, and yeah, that's just plenty of goofy characters in in South Park. I guess how show up. how do you like, munch get it though? Um, carefully. <laughs> a lot of. Things. That is not presented correctly. It can come off as very, very, very insensitive. Yeah, that's that's the other issue is because of the nature of the humor that I, I'll link it there. I'm like, this is just like a. I just don't know. Um, I, I just there uh, of the products they could have had, this one just feels like it, not that it couldn't work. I feel like it's just that it's like it, they're they're. Going in a direction that seems like they're putting a lot of work on themselves unnecessarily for like a product line. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, hey, one of the cards is a South Park episode I have seen. It references the World of Warcraft episode. Okay. That's one I have seen. That's like the only episode I've seen. I did also see something else here that when I went to USAopoly, I just as a side note, yet another clue. It's an anime based clue. Anime, gross. Naruto. Because I reasons. mean, fair enough, right? I mean, everything's been a Naruto at this point. I, I just... It was only a matter of time. I just... Why why Clue? I just, why Naruto, though? At this <sighs> point in time? Who's watching Naruto? I know Baruto is, is, is bad, but, like, who is watching Naruto? <laughs> this, in this year of 2023, who, <laughs> who will go to Control and be like, man, I really wouldn't watch Naruto. That anime that's 20 years old. God. Yeah. It's a look. I, I have a mixed feelings about that entire series. Uh, I will tell you. I, um, oh, I've seen all of it. I did I've too. Watched every episode. I, I hate I, it. I, I, I've seen it. I, I ended up. Uh, God, you know. I've seen I, the movies I, too. I, I don't know if I saw the last couple of movies. The movies are really. The bad. movies are just so bad. Uh, I. I don't know how I put up with the. It was was it like 100, 200 filler episodes? It was. It was, like, it was a different time. We didn't have access to anime easily, so when we found something, we had to watch all of it. But it was it was so it many was filler bad. episodes. We had Crunchyroll back in the day. I I had funny. read the manga. I know where the manga went, so I knew it was all fucking filler. Oof, I've never read the manga. I had like one. I it was, it's I fine. I've read the first. I, I feel like, in certain ways, it was better. In other ways, you know, it's manga, so it has its limitations. I mean, it's like, eh, it's old. Naruto's not particularly good. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Uh, it, that I will tell you. I will say, yeah, it's okay. Um, it's fine. Bar um, Baruto is significantly worse because Baruto has the problem of, hey, here's the old characters. They solve the problem. Honestly, there's like a hundred episodes of the original Naruto in the middle that you can just get rid of and skip onto yeah. Shippuden. Because Shippuden's yeah, like the actual like manga stuff then, and it's yeah. fine. It's it's kind of like when you adapt the original material, yeah. it works it's, better. It's like Full Metal Alchemist or yes. Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist Brother. You don't really have to watch normal Full Metal Alchemist because most of that's was done before the manga was like even written. <laughs> I got another one too. Helsing vs. Helsing Ultimate. Yes, just just watch Helsing Ultimate. It's yeah. just better. It's just better. It's more based on the original person's work, Watch which was like... a bridge, too. That's also a good time. I'm sure that is, too. Yes. Anyway, so, hey! Thanks, USAopoly, for I something. Mean, I don't know. It's not the worst. 
clue. There's murders that happen in Naruto. There is. So, like, and honestly, you know, they're ninjas, so they can disguise as people. So, I think that's yeah, fine. There's the sand dude with the gourd. He's probably, he probably did it. Probably. I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, he got better from the sociopathy. <laughs> that's a weird thing to say. You know, I mean, that's just how it worked. He became a good character. Like, he's not an evil guy. I, I guess he never really had sociopath. He just had, like, a lot of trauma and took it out in, yeah. a, in a very violent way because, you know, like, when you have, like, mind powers over sand and you get angry because of trauma, yeah. it's not good for anybody that lives nearby to you. Yeah. Turns out, trauma's a bad idea. <laughs> God. Uh, anyway, we got a deeper discussion topic today. Um... And it's one that I thought would have been interesting to bring in today, because it's one, and it's, hey, um, third-party material. I call it expanding okay. third-party parties. Understanding what is right for your game. Because the fact is, hey, let's look at D&D. D&D &D is the easy one to look at, because, yeah. honestly, they're the ones that have the most third-party material out of everything. Well, Somewhere. Yeah. Pathfinder doesn't have a lot of third-party material, though. Yes. Okay. It has so much. <clears throat> Most of it's oh, it did. bad. Most of it's bad, and you should never use the third-party stuff, with the exception of, like, the third-party Kitsune, because it's actually playable. Yeah, I, I think it's the thing is, like, this is the com comment that comes up is, I, 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 for I forgot, like, when, as soon as you started talking about it, it was coming to mind more, that, like, oh, yeah, I'm beginning to remember all that crap that was out there. Because, like, I gotta be honest, my group used, like, 0.1% of all third-party material. Like, normally when someone brought third-party material, we're like, what is this? It's third-party? Hmm. Because, uh, I gotta be honest, for Pathfinder, it really felt unbalanced. Our, our biggest example for that was, look up the Artificer for Pathfinder. Yes. It's, it's not cool. balanced. It's very broken. No. Very, very bad. You know. And um, I think that's... Yeah. I, 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 if you want to say something, go ahead. Um, every third-party feat that exists in Pathfinder, just know that immediately. Don't allow any of them. They're disgusting. I, I think there's like... Uh, you, you have to look them very carefully is the problem. Yeah. You have to look at all of them very carefully. And um, I, I think that's the issue with all of that stuff is that even when you're coming into 5th edition is 5th edition the good thing about that is it's a lot harder to break things we've talked about yeah. it not impossible but harder than saying something like Pathfinder and that advantage means that there's a lot more leeway when I throw out this product line of spells mm -hmm. and monsters and class abilities mm -hmm. and weapons and stuff they tend to they, it's a lot harder for them to be unbalanced Fifth edition has that advantage. Pathfinder really didn't. No. And that's the thing is that third party stuff can oftentimes, if you're not careful, unbalance things in yeah. weird ways. Um, like I'll give it a go. I use so it, I what I use that would that technically sure you call third party. Me and Lightning make a lot of stuff for our game, a lot of custom stuff. Well, a lot of it's balanced, like the two or three custom classes we've made together, they're, we're pretty balanced. There are a couple of things that I look at and I'm like, man, really these only are balanced in the specific rules we use for 5th edition. Mm -hmm. They're very different from the core rules. Like, my species of rabbit people have an ability to detect cursed magic items. You can't detect cursed items in 5th edition normally. There's no way to do it. But we've kind of made rules that you can in 5e. So, like, you know... Couldn't really use that in a normal 5e game because it breaks cursed items. Yeah. And that's an, that's an interesting way of looking at things because it's sort of like... It, it's the problem with a lot of, like... I can pick up a Pathfinder book, and I can pick up a Wizards book, and I can have a pretty good idea that it's going to be at least relatively balanced for the system. 
they're the writers of the system, they can still make mistakes. I'm not saying they don't, but very much so less likely to make a mistake. You know, yeah. it, it, it's going it, much higher chance of being like balanced, work well. If I pick up something from anyone else, it's the problem that you start to like, that starts going out the window. Yeah. And again, 5e products, they tend to be pretty decent. So yeah. You you still have to take them with a grain of salt, but less likely than let's say like I pull out a a Cobalt Press book for Pathfinder. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna have to take a look at Cobalt Press yeah. does a good job. Cobalt makes great things. I, there is a criticism I have with Cobalt Press is um, they mark things in the wrong CR very often. Mm. For their homebrew monsters, a lot of their monsters are stronger than the CR they say it is. Okay, um, and that's more of an issue with how you calculate CR in 5th edition. Mm. Which is a very vague calculation for it. But those are third-party monsters. Uh, you have to look at those, or you could just kill your party. Like, uh, I was in the game, DM used a golem that was like immune to all spells. Uh, two party members couldn't do anything, because there were two casters in the party. So we just sat out of the combat and did nothing for 30 minutes. Mm. it's just such a it, it's the problem that I feel like third party material you have to be so much more careful when you're you're doing something with it you have to look carefully you have to pick it up carefully it's the unfortunate thing that like that's the disadvantage over um, something like again I'll pick up a book from Wizards of the Coast mm. I'm going to be pretty confident it's going to be at least workable and I don't have to like you know if I buy a first party book I can have the assurance that it is going to work pretty well with 5th edition's base core rules mm -hmm. in a balanced sense because well yeah we joke about Tasha's being very broken but in reality Tasha's is balanced for the normal rules of the game. yeah and that's the kind of thing it's like I can pick up Tasha's and I'm fine with it like Path, like Pathfinder Second Edition, I can pick up the Player's Guide. I can place up the Complete uh, Ancestries Guide and all those other guides. And whatever they put in it, all the new stuff that they put in there, should work fine. It works for the old Pathfinder. I pick up a book from Paizo. You know, hey, look at that. It's Paizo book. You know, someone asked me, can I use this? Honestly speaking, I normally don't have to think a lot about it and be like, yeah, sure usually want to check things at the end and mm. see because you can get an idea of like if something does seem broken oh, afterwards but like anything your players suggest because um i mean summoner broken as fuck mm -hmm. it played in a certain way yeah um mass summoner especially kitsune is very bad in pathfinder it's just very underpowered and yeah you're gonna be behind a lot compared to others it... um base barbarian you just really should never use that over Unchained because base where you just kill yourself. Yeah. It, it's... There's a lot of stuff that's in there that certainly, like, it, you have to check their characters in general as they make it. Okay, that's fine. That's a normal thing to do. But it's like the idea of, like, you don't have to go, like, and be like, hey, you know, look at the source and think about it heavily. You can just see, like, how does your character work? Uh, what does this do? What does this do? Does that seem broken? Nah, it's fine. You know, how does this affect my world? You, you ask these questions anyway. But I feel like there are more questions when it comes to a third party kind of thing of like, okay, what the hell does this mean sometimes? Yeah. Um, I don't tend to allow third party unless I've pre-read it and, and like, okay, like, I tend to allow Blood Hunter, which is a third party class um, by Mr. Matthew Mercer. It's balanced in some ways, a little strong in others. I know how to deal with it. I tend to allow that. But there's some, like, if you come to me from something that's like, this is from the D&D &D wiki, I'm gonna say no immediately. Mm -hmm. That is third party content. That is just made by a random dude. Yeah. And, and I think it's like, 
we're we're it's an entire other topic when we want to get into just homebrew stuff because we're talking published third party now, yeah. which means they've got some smart people talking about it. It's just that these smart people are still coming at the game from outside of the mm -hmm. game. Like, if I successfully published a book for, like, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and it was a third-party book, great. I, I would know enough about the, thir the, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition system to write and publish that book. Mm -hmm. I'm not the creator of that. I'm not the people that are working with that all the time. I'm coming in from the outside, you know? There might be, like certain ways that they think of things mechanically and the way that they do things for their design I don't know about that balances out stuff and that's kind of one of those things is most designers you have a direction you design stuff from a, a, an idea of like like if I'm designing a class here's the thing here's my checklist that we do for designing a class let's say or things that we need to do when we're redesigning like an old class in Pathfinder 2nd Edition great I don't have that list I have to just kind of, like, wing it and pretend like I know what's going on there. And then, like, I can make mistakes because I don't know that. And I cannot know that even if I'm working with a publishing company. You know, there are... Even if I'm, like, a big professional, it, it, it even if there's, like, you know, um, editors who are trying... Or, like, people that are looking over my work, they're the same as me. We're not perfect. So that's that's I think that's another thing to think about when you're talking about third party is they don't come up across the design space the same way that people that originally designed the game come across the design space. And you have to keep that in mind when you're working on it, at very least. Um, <clears throat> and it, it, it's a thing to keep in mind with um, when you're looking to approve stuff too. So it, it's I think the big thing to take home here is that it's not don't use third-party stuff. Because, honestly speaking, there can be some cool things in there. Um, I, the Artificer. There was a cool concept for that Artificer for Pathfinder 1st Edition. It was just executed kind of poorly. There were some issues with it. Even, like, when I played in a game with Joe, who, you know, was pretty good, there were some things about it that were like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he's doing an okay job, but uh, this is just a decision-making. He, he played the character better than it was rightfully made to be, I guess is the way to say so. uh. Could have, could have been a lot worse. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, like, I, for me, third party is, is certainly something I'll allow if you give it to me like a week or two ahead of time so I can read it and, you know, actually think about it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because I've been burned on third party quite a lot when I have a lot of players do it. Um, so I tend to have a blanket bring this to me well before the game starts. Uh, and I'll read over it. Uh, I've certainly played third-party things before. I've played some of the critical role third-party stuff. They were okay. Um, very mixed bag in terms of balance. Some stuff is very overpowered. Some stuff is very weak. Um, because it fits specifically into that world of critical role. Matthew Mercer's setting. It fits specifically into there. Yeah. So it's going to be weaker in other settings. Um, there's first-party third-party stuff. Is also a thing. Like oh, Everon. Yeah, Everon. Wizards doesn't own Everon. Yeah. But they published a book for it. Um, and it was written by the Everon people. A lot of the stuff in Everon is very, very strong. I know that is an official book. It is still third party because it's not done by the first party writers. Yeah. Uh, like Warforge is pretty strong. A lot of the Dragon Mark stuff, well, setting is just very, very strong. Artificer is. Artificer can be. Busted as hell with this edition. Because you're, you're, it's a class that makes magic. So that's always automatically going to unbalance your game. Yeah. I think it really comes down to is the best way to look at it is that um, it, it, don't rest on your laurels. You know, again, 
certainly, you, you look over a character when someone's made it, and uh, there are plenty of times that, you, I, you know, I'm plenty of times I just, like, you know, kind of just glance over, read the basics, and I'm like, what did you do? What was that? Okay, cool. All right, call it yeah. a day. You know, and there are things you can miss. Telling your players, like, hey, if you want to use something third-party, come to me. It's a great way that they don't pull something out of nowhere that you might not be expecting. Yeah. And, I mean, they still might surprise you with something from, let's say, like, Tasha's that you weren't expecting or another book, uh, any other book, really, in general. But it doesn't mean that you can't be like, oh, okay, cool. That's still something that Wizards made, you know? And mm -hmm. it, it, <sighs> There's a level of trust for first-party stuff. But going beyond that to, let's say, like, you know, your... I... That's a weird thing. Is there a second party? Second party, I think, would be something like Outrun. Okay, so... You got your second parties, which, you know, you can you should still be a little careful for, but probably not as much. And then your third party is like, yeah, just research it if someone wants to use it and you are going to allow it. You know? Yeah. Um, that's the best way to say it. Um... I oftentimes, still to this day, basically because uh, the PSFR D20, um, and I don't know if uh, Archives and Netis does it too, but I know the PSFR D20 had a archive of also a bunch of third-party stuff for yeah. pa the Pathfinder role-playing game. First uh, edition. Netis doesn't. It's just the for, it's just the normal rules. There is a PSFR D for uh, second edition too. I tend not very, to use it. It's not very good. Yeah. 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 That's it, still better. Yeah. It, it, last time I was there, it was better than it was when I first yeah. checked it out, like, a couple years ago. Slowly getting better, but still not as good as the first one. <clears throat> there was a lot of, like, sorting and archiving and doing things. Yeah. It's a lot of work for that, but some, they're oh, yeah. doing it. Absolutely. Um, so, will that eventually replace Archives of Nethys? I don't know. Archives of Nethys would go for second now. But anyway, there's an archive of third-party stuff there, too. I oftentimes tell people, just don't use the third party, yeah. but if someone really wanted to come to me with something, they could talk to me about it. So, like, you were saying, third party stuff for Kitsune fixes a lot of issues for it. Yeah. Um, it still ends up being underpowered, but you at least are on par with some of the other lower RP um, species in yeah. Pathfinder first edition. Yeah. Because it's also, little... you're never going to be better than a human. Human is statistically the best pick for a character because of extra skills and extra feet. It's very yeah. difficult to get better than one of those. I mean, you know, because that then it comes down to uh, the game you're in, specific builds that if something that you're what you're playing affects that build in a way that's very good. That's really the only way that it makes up for that. It can happen, just not as often. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Third-party stuff is a thing that you're going to have to think about at some point in time. Don't just ignore it. <laughs> make make a decision. A it. Yeah. it also helps keep the game alive, so some of it is genuine. It very much so helps for something like, I don't know, 5th edition, which just has a lack of material. Yeah, 5th edition unfortunately lacks a lot of content, because it specifically lacks in Monsters. So that tends to be where I get a lot of minus through third party or I make it myself. Which, it, again, you've stated here, it's kind of a mixed bag. You have to yeah. kind of be careful what you're using. And... It's because the CR calculations in 5e are very, very basic, and there's not a defined formula to figure it out. You kind of have to judge it based on something else. It's, like If your monster from a third party is CR5, you have to judge it against a poor rule CR5 but some of the CR5 are not correct. Like, Wraith is, is a much higher CR because it doesn't take its drain ability into, into um, account. <sighs> so Wraith can just kill a player outright. You know, this is one, the one thing I have to say about the uh, Pathfinder 1st Edition CR system. It actually worked really well. Yeah, it works. Pathfinder has always had a better CR system than... Yeah. Even the second edition one seems at least a little bit better tuned. Yeah. I just it's easier to know what CR you're meant to throw at people. I guess that's another reason that I just I've avoided combat whenever I've run fifth edition because I'm like it just is so hit there or miss when I'm using something. There are calculators out there like um, Cobalt Fight Club, but okay. it's not always to be accurate because it's that's a blanket average characters of this level, average thing of this CR. Mm -hmm. 
not everything is built in a vacuum. Yeah. Players are going to make decisions to make it harder or easier. Some classes are just outright weaker than others. Yeah. Some people just choose really silly builds, and then you have yeah. to be like, well, you know, thanks. <clears throat> or some builds are so powerful, you have to, you can't really design your encounter around anything. You just have to guess. <sighs> oh, fifth edition. Third party helps you, but it also doesn't help you. Because yep. you got problems on your own. Ah, but yes, so that is, uh, that's our little uh, PSA on third slash second party material. It's Ooh. stuff you got to keep in mind, honestly. Don't, you can ignore it, but players might ask about it, so be ready to actually have an answer for them. Even if that answer is, I don't use that, let them know that. Don't be afraid to tell your player no. Yeah. Especially in character creation. Yeah. If, if you don't want them to use it, just tell them. Yeah, communication is the biggest part of running and playing tabletop. Players need to communicate, and then, you know, the DM needs to communicate. Players, it, everyone has to talk to each other to some degree, so you don't do something to make the other people angry. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how about of our week in tabletop? We had a week. We had, we had a week. Um... Did you do anything on Sunday? We did do something on Sunday. I don't remember a lot of it aside from it was travel and talking. No, I do remember. Okay. We fought a bunch of demon men in the army base, and then it took a very long time. I was very sad because I play a gold dragon, and it was the first time I wanted to use my gold dragon abilities, and they had fire resistance. I'm like, well, I can't really use my breath weapon against these guys. That sucks. Um, but we killed a bunch of demon men. I wanted to take, like, I wanted to non-lethal a few of them, but I have a gun, which, fun fact, are always lethal. Uh, and the other person has a knife that wants to eat souls. Um, so there's no talking that person out of killing people. That sells. That sells character. Why am I not surprised? That character is... Genuinely, we have warned... Cell's, character, Cell's been warned, in game and out of game, that crime equals prison time in in the modern world. And that there is specifically people meant to hunt and arrest magical individuals. If Cell doesn't stop the crime, I'm pretty sure that character's dead in a couple of sessions. <laughs> so you're There's saying like, to we, me... We were like... <laughs> the crime is I, happening. I wanted to look at people we had put, had to deal with to see if they had like ID to see if they were test subjects or uh, employees mm -hmm. other employees sell stole a bunch of credit cards from them I'm like man credit card fraud is a federal crime my dude you're already wanted by the FBI like your thoughts if you do that credit cards are trackable <sighs> see I'm pretty sure Cell's going to be playing a new character in a couple of sessions because the magic FBI is going to come and shoot him. Uh. <laughs> he's, he's caused so much chaos and a lot of issues with this character. Um, but yeah, we found a portal and then we made it to level 3, so we all picked our subclasses. Man. Yep. Monday is just, I'm trying to remember, but for whatever reason, it's. For some reason, towards the end of the week, like I, 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 I half remember Wednesday and I don't remember Monday at all. There's just something about this week that's just like it just, like sometimes it like it comes to me right away. And I'm trying to think about like what happened. We didn't go into the underground yet because there was a time we had to wait. We were doing stuff, but I'm also trying to think about like it, was it just a let's do a lot of stuff day or did we do anything else? Like you know, like a lot of like side tangenty character -y things that you know build up to you know the next part that are a little bit fillery but a little bit character development because i think that was what we were doing a bunch of but i'm also like was there something else in there i should remember and i don't it, it's not coming to mind is the problem it's sort of like nothing stood out be like i know my character did but my character didn't do it i, I do remember 
we were warning the one character who's previously gotten in with terrorists not join a second terrorist organization. I see you have a cell in that game. Uh, look, we broke them out of the... The, the, the first time was an accident, technically. Mm -hmm. There were, like, some protesters. Like, I'm going to join the protesters. And the protesters were like, hey, do you want to come to this other meeting we're having? <laughs> You don't yeah, like I this thing to, just like yeah, us. I just wanted to protest environmental damage. I didn't want to blow up a reactor. <laughs> That's actually kind of what happened. <laughs> they did technically stop before they blew up a reactor, but they took a lot of the C4. It's why we have high explosives with us. Because he just stole the high explosives then instead of planting it. Fair enough. But he still was hanging out with terrorists for a while. We're like... He, he could infiltrate yet a, a, a... That was just, I think, eco-terrorist. These are psychic terrorists, because he's also oh, nice. psychic. And he's like, D should he join the psychic terrorists? We're like, don't actually join worse. them. Please just find information out, but don't really join them, you know? <laughs> Lord. I do remember I was like, we were looking up some stuff on the computer and had me roll some checks, and I was like rolling well, and other people were not. That's I remember fair. that. That happens sometimes. Uh -huh. um, and it was really someone else asked me, hey, can you punch in these numbers and look up this thing? And I'm like, sure. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, and I thought about it. Would my character ask what this is all about? And I decided, no, no, he wouldn't. <laughs> it's not my character. <laughs> he doesn't really care. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Sure. That's yeah, so, so fine. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, I, we're, we're going to go explore underground. I think this next episode. Ooh. Um, and then, um,. Tuesday. Did you do anything Tuesday? Tuesday was canceled. Jay was just, like mega sick. Okay. The BM's like dying from a uh, flu. I think it was. I think it was flu. Ooh. Had it for a couple weeks now. Mm-hmm. Sucks to have bad flu. Yeah, it's not fun. I used to him better now though. Oh, that's uh, good. I just talked to him the other day. He's, he's feeling a little better. Excellent improvement. Hurrah. Um. Then we did have uh, Wednesday, which we kind of we 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 finished up everything for the mass battle, which you know uh, sounds like the dice roll stuff went fine. Yeah, um, I probably could have tweaked the difficulty a little bit to like make it a little bit more challenging, but it's kind of hard mm. to figure it out with you people. We're good at a large array of things. I think that helped too. We're very diverse. At least we have a very diverse skill set in the party, which helps. And I did allow for a lot of like diverse <coughs> skills, which helps yeah. you too, uh, rather than just like cutting it into certain things. Um, so you know, it ended up well. It was a good. It was very good. A lot of interesting things happened. We figured out some magic items you managed to pick yeah. up, and there's some gold. And you 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 Ooh. took over a wormwood. <clears throat> took over the wormwood. Um, this game has taught me exactly one thing. It's that in the next Pathfinder game, I just need to make a fighter that is fully committed to killing mages. I have to tell you, the a lot of other campaigns have a lot less actual just straight-up mages. Uh, because you know it's what? Like, I, I, and this is not on you, SPM. I'm sure it's genuinely just how... Because every mage stat plug is like, at XHP, they leave because they don't want to die. But I feel like, man, you're going to teleport back to Harrigan after you've lost his ship. You're dead. <sighs> you had a chance of living if you just surrendered. Yeah, but like, you know, you don't people, execute people. <laughs> people don't think sometimes. They just are like, I'm getting away, you know? Um, I'm going to where I know. off screen now, I assume. Or tortured horribly. Uh, you'll see. Uh, I There's a lot of that stuff for next week that I've got to figure out some things with because there's also this weird abomination that attacked yeah, the location. Which I, I haven't quite figured out what that's had as an effect yet. I have yeah, some ideas. Yeah. I'm glad the Harrigan's a barbarian, at least. So he can't teleport away. No. And, and, and I mean, like, there are plenty of people that are like fight to the death, you know? Um, it's like... It's a combination of two things I hate, and Pathfinder does a lot. It's a combination of the invisibility spell and uh, retreat threshold on, like, everyone. 
Well, at least everyone who's a humanoid for the most part. Yeah, a lot of humanoids do. Not not I all of them. It. It's just very frustrating. <laughs> I, I think it's the idea that, like, if you're fanatical, you're probably going to fight to the death. But there's a lot of non-fanatical people, especially yeah. in, like, a pirate game. This is, I think, this is the game that has it the worst. I believe we've killed, out of all the humanoid enemies, we've killed, like, three. As, yeah. As, as, in terms of the villains. Which is, like, pretty, a pretty low number, considering how many there have been. I mean, again, like, it, it's also, like, certain certain circumstances change, you know, like, uh, things, too. Like, if you had killed uh, the whale's mother first, the, the, the lady in the first cave, if she died first, the whale first fights to the death. It doesn't matter. As soon as he died, she runs away. That's specifically, like, her thing is, like, oh, you've, you've killed my trump card, my son. I'm getting out of here, you know? Uh... It became, like, kind of poetic story-wise for uh, Scourge Plug stuff, you know. That's... They were technically dead. I used them as a MacGuffin kind of thing, you know. And I I, I was going to do more with them, but then again, it was like... It just... It, it was a lot of extra work, and it would have yeah. been some stuff that would have been very cool later on. But I'm like also like... With how long the entire adventure goes, which is one of those things I wasn't thinking about as early when I kind of did it. Mm -hmm. It's become more like, I would like to finish it, and I would like to have a resolution kind of stuff. I don't want the resolution stuff after the last adventure to be that long. You know? Yeah. And it's sort of like, earlier me that wasn't thinking that was like, or thinking like along those lines, was not, you know, uh, making plans that were good for later me. You know, so, you know, if I would go back now, I would not have reintroduced Scourge and Plug. I just would have left them gone. I would have just left that kind of like, that, those not those numbers, like, they're they're gone. Because you can, you can bring stuff back, but you don't need to bring stuff yeah. back, too. Some of these things are just like, they're gone forever, or you can use them again. I mean, I don't think there's any, like, after that, uh, I can't remember, like, off the top of my head, the really big ones. Uh, there, I'm sure there's a few others that are in there that, you know... Cyclops guy. Who we killed all of the Cyclops that just left. And... That one made the most sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I just... With everybody murdered. Like, every yeah, no, last that, that one, one murdered. That one is fair. Because, like, his entire tribe just died. I feel like, yeah, he's just gonna leave. I just, I just couldn't think of a reason for him to, like, just be there then, you know? It's just like... It's like, What? He, he he never came off in the writing of his character as fanatical enough to just, you know, like, I will avenge them all and fight to the death. No, he's kind of an evil jackass, you know? He's, yeah. He, he, we'll he, just go find another tribe to take over. Yeah. Um, we did teleport away a second in command. He did. So, like, it, again, like, it's one of those things is, uh... It, it, it specifically, also, it's like as soon as she's either dead or gone, it, it, all, most of the other officers surrender except for like one of them. But that was like it, that one was already dead. I think it was like Kipper, who was the one I like yeah. randomly rolled to get killed, was Fair. the one that would have surrendered. That definitely, fight immediately went into our favor after I did seventy damage to a target who was one of the bosses. That did help a lot. Yeah, she went like I assume had like single digit HP left after that. And then uh, went to Die Hard pretty quickly afterwards. She She's was... Very low HP, because she did go into Die Hard very quickly. She was, did go into Die Hard pretty quickly, but I think she was at, like, <laughs> in the 20s, actually. So she was barely in the Die Hard when it was hit. And then when uh, she was hit again, it was, like did a bajillion damage, so it didn't yeah. matter. You know? But it was sort of like, she was barely Die Hard. Um, so she was, like, kind of still standing, but not quite. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I think it went well. Like, again, like, t teleporting Nothing. shenanigans will probably be no Jacob longer. Jacob's rolling badly and getting nuked. But that's not on you. That's kind of on Jacob's rolls. Also, killing, inv killing both checks. <laughs> Invoker is just mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, there was a chance I would have killed Jacob, and I, I, it was honestly, I, I thought about it, and I, like, I did the math. I, I put specifically down, I was measuring the chain lightning she was casting, mm -hmm. and I was seeing, like, she wants to hit these people that are over here, including, because she's just seen this person that's betrayed her. 
you know. Yeah. So I'm like, how can I include this and nuke Jacob? And I'm like, well, no, I can't. Jacob's lying there, toasting on the ground. Like, it, doesn't need to. And we're at the level where death kind of doesn't matter for a single character anymore, anyways, because we have raised it. Yeah. So you could have theoretically resurrected him. So yeah, he would just been resurrected. We have clerics and plenty of healers. He could have just been swapped with a raised head. Exactly. Cost some money, but you know you're yeah. usually willing to spend it for your. We're pretty rich. Mm-hmm. So, um, boop 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 boop. Did you do anything on Thursday? I had my game on Thursday. Okay. Uh, the party took the horrible abomination they found in the cave back to the surface to study it. Uh, the cool artificer did an autopsy on it. The druid who may or may not have an ancient parasite living within him, uh, had to roll some wisdom saves, eventually fell, and then uh, ate the body to gain his power. Um, he turned into a big frog. No, he didn't turn into a big frog. Hey, you, you remember Birkin from Resident Evil 2? The, the druid had a Birkin-style uh, thing burst out of his chest to just absorb a body, because he is an aberration. <sighs> Uh, these are decisions the player made that I allowed because I loved the idea immediately. Uh, to be fair, he is kind of like, in all honesty, not the most fucked up person in the party. The Artificer is more of a fucked up individual. The Artificer keeps taking his body parts out of him and putting metal ones in him. Grand idea, usually. Well, he's enslaved by a primordial, so that's his problem. He used to figure that one out now. Yeah, Lightning's character was actually just a normal person. Traveling all the bunch of freaks. Lindsay's character is a fae. Um, and then that's it for weird people. They have a robot with them technically as well, as an NPC. And they found a future robot. And Ooh. they put an AI into it. Good times, future robots. Um, but yeah, then they basically had some chats with a dark elf lady who is very interested in their discovery and wants to fund an expedition into what is basically the Underdark, which will be the last half, last legs of the journey we'll be going into the Underdark and beyond. Um, unfortunately, Lightning's character has no reason to stick around, so they have departed and Lightning is rolled a new character. Which mm. is unfortunate when it happens, but sometimes it generally happens that a character has no reason to stick around. Storylines end, and then you just have yeah, to be like, well... It happens. Yep. Uh, it's unfortunate. I'm a little sad about it, but it makes sense. My character has a child to go look after. Can't really go delving into the Underdark. <sighs> when it... you're the ruler of a town, mm -hmm. adventuring is difficult. Yeah, no. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting sometimes to sort of like... It, it's one of those things is I don't mind that storyline happening stuff, but it's also like one of those things that like it, it ends up being I try to avoid that kind of storyline stuff happening sometimes just because. I mean, sometimes you just get in that situation. It oh, yeah. Happens. Oh, yeah. It, sometimes it just happens because yeah. shit just happens. Yeah. Um, Lady Searcher also doesn't, I mean, for good reasons, doesn't trust the Dark Elf Lady, to be fair. Yeah. Like, he's been helpful to the party, but. Uh, the party's experience with Dark has been, they're all kind of all evil. Yeah. In terms of alignment. They're not great people. <clears throat> so. Uh... She's pretty sus, yeah. She's been scrying on you to see if you were doing your job or not. <laughs> That's pretty sus. Uh, how about Friday? Anything? Uh, we don't do anything on Fridays huh. anymore. I played a video game. I played a Stardew Valley clone. It was pretty good. Ooh. Called Sunhaven. Oh, nice. Got some buggy multiplayer, but still managed to be pretty fun. I have resisted, because uh, I saw that, uh, I, I don't remember who was doing it. Someone was doing um, Stardew Valley again. I'm like, oh, what are you doing for Stardew there's like There's like mods for Stardew Valley that had are, so much. There are really good mods. And I'm also like, I'm like, I like Stardew Valley. I don't know if I want to play through Stardew Valley again. I like, couldn't play through Stardew Valley again solo. I'd need to do it in a four-person group. <sighs> which the game absolutely cannot handle. Yeah, like, especially, like, heavy modded, like, with big yeah. expansion, multiple players. I just don't know how you do that. The, the game has... The Stardew Valley is great, but it, its multiplayer has a lot of issues still. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's basically the week uh, as we went. Yeah. Um, 
If you want to check out anything else I did this week, I finished up a Resident Evil 1 item randomizer. Hell yeah, how'd that go? Actually, it was pretty fun. Um, it was actually really interesting because I was worried um, that I would have to like run back outside of the mm -hmm. lab, but I got lucky that I did not. Yeah. Um, um... I was also smart because there was an option to have the canister already loaded, and mm -hmm. I found the canister in the mansion. Yeah. <laughs> like, One of the things you should do before... This is just a general advice, because RE randos are very fun. I think the classic games, the classic here, are some of the best uh, content for randos. Um, you should learn the list of the key items you need to progress, mm. so you know when you can leave an area or not. Because when you get to the, both of the plugs in RE2, you, that's when you can for sure leave the police station. You don't have to backtrack. Yeah. I, it ended up being a lot. Well, it, it was more that, like, because I I really couldn't remember everything I needed for the lab. And also, I didn't know what the randomizer did, too. Yeah, um, that's fair. It, when I discovered the battery for the elevator to the helipad earlier, I'm like, that's randomized. <laughs> yeah, no, everything gets randomized. It's great. I was watching a RE2 rando the other day, and there was like uh, five Mr. X in the hallway. I, I'm gonna have to do like a, 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 a enemy randomizer next. I think when oh, I want to do it for remake, the enemy randomizer is gonna suck because it's gonna put Yawn somewhere. <laughs> it's gonna be in like the worst spot. And the no, I I you saw hallway. <laughs> I, I I saw someone do the randomizer with monsters, and Yawn was in the pa the passage back to the uh, nice. courtyard. But Perfect. the thing is, because it was like the way that the dog spawns, it was just outside the wall and would occasionally nice. wander in and then back out. So it would always spawn okay. outside. And but then like you know you're in there doing something, and all of a sudden Yawn's in there, and you're like, oh nice. shit! <laughs> Perfect. It just it just clipped through the world. <laughs> But then you're like, you could just put in, like, you know, helipad tyrants there, you know, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you're just I mean, RE2 randos, I think, are more, are easier in general because, uh, especially original, there are certain enemies that can't do attacks if they're not in certain rooms. Like, IVs don't work if they're not in the lab. They can't spit, so they're not a threat. I, I was watching that randomizer you put up, and I found it very interesting that, like, it, it's something that's not in the RE1 randomizer I've used. I mm -hmm. would like to see that they do that with the key items are random, randomized, and then, like, the weapons and the items and the, and the you know, ammo and the healing items are all randomized in their own way that you just roll all those yeah. separately. The, uh, the bio -rand randomizer for um, the classic games is currently the most advanced Resident Evil randomizer. Yeah, it took, it took years to develop. That, that's the thing is, I saw that and I'm like, that's really cool. You you like distribute the key items and then fill all the extra slots with random schlock after that, you know. And that's you can that seems turn like off all enemies. You can adjust enemy numbers. It's great. It's one of the best experiences. I, I was watching that. I love the random arms in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> My favorite was um, you did a playthrough. You know when Irons is in the chair over the dead woman and he turns around. <laughs> The chair turned around, it was Sherry. Sherry <laughs> killed that woman. <laughs> that was pretty good. Like the, the They're just doing voice lines, and you, it's just making weird conversations. Uh, yeah, no, there's there's some good stuff there. Um, I, I, I want to do some more randomized content. I, like, I'm confident in original RE, RE Remake. Those are ones I know a lot. Yep. Um, uh, there's some of the other ones I know enough, but, like, RE2... I owned it, I played through it. I didn't play through it a lot, because I got I know, it later yeah. on. I know RE2 and 3, like the back of my hand. I yeah. played them so much. But I couldn't do an RE1 randomizer. I don't know where anything is in that game. The original one, I... I might want to, like, watch a playthrough to remind yeah, myself, you, you or do a playthrough. Know how the, the order of operations works in those games. Pretty good but, but, like, doing the RE remake, it's sort of like, I knew where all the items were. So I knew, like, oh, I need this to go here, I need this to go here, like, it, it's just a matter of, like, uh, you know, uh, remembering uh, remembering how many key items I need to beat the game is, I think. I, I can remember the key items, I can remember where to use the key items, 
thinking along the lines of what's the quickest way to go to beat the game is something that I think I have to work on in my brain for that I kind of stuff. Do an RE4 randomizer as I've never played RE4. Uh, the thing about the RE4 randomizer, because I have seen a playthrough of it, it's it's really more of an item slash merchant slash enemy randomizer. Like, the map otherwise is relatively the same. I don't know if there's a door randomizer for that one. I, yeah, no, I do. I, I, I've never watched the RE4 random. It, it's, it's funky, but it, it feels like it's almost standard RE, say for like, what weapon do I get? Oh, there's like, you know, the more elite enemies from the end of the game here at the beginning of the game instead of like the villagers, you know? <laughs> Stuff like that. Or you know, uh there's there's this has been replaced by like horrible dog monsters when it was just a bunch of villagers, you know, something like that, you know. But it was fun. I'm glad to do it. Um and then I uh I did oh I did my skill guide on, on Tuesday. That was fun. I did a Pathfinder 2nd Edition where I just talked about skills, skill feats, and all that stuff, and that was, that was good. So if you want to learn about that kind of stuff and how, uh, you know, to, what you want to think about and know about uh, skills for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, just check it out. I recommend that. Uh, and I got busy on, on Thursday, so I didn't do a second tabletop thing, because um, it, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was a thing. I'll just say that. I talked about it on, on Friday. Anyway. Uh, I think that's it for now. I'll definitely do more randomized in the future. Uh, there's a couple more games that I'm definitely confident that I could do an easy randomized, and a couple more that, like, uh, I could probably do. Like, I'm not 100% sure where a lot of, where certain things are, but, like, I'm fairly good at them. Um, so, I'll, I'll see my list and come up with them for more in the future. And more tabletop stuff. So, anyway. I think that's good enough for now. I can't think of anything else that we have to talk about for this week. Um, hey, thank you for joining. Uh, yeah. Monday, not 100% sure what I'm doing yet. I'll let people know on Monday. Um, same for Tuesday, Thursday. I'll probably do some more Pathfinder 2nd Edition can uh, content. I've been enjoying talking about that. And then something else. Buccaneers. Uh, the plan is, I guess, at this point in time, uh, a little bit of cleanup from a big old battle and then go to Harrigan's base. Yeah, clean up. Player chatting and murder. Yeah. Where I've got to make a bunch of decisions on things that are going on. Um, I have some ideas, but I'll have to work on that. And then, um... I think it's the main thing that's for the week. So, anyway. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining as usual, Momo. Yeah. Um, I hope everybody has a great rest of your Saturday. And I'll, I'll see you Monday. At the very least, Momo and joining me on Wednesday, I assume. So, yeah. those times. Uh, farewell, everybody. Bye. Bye.